Welcome to Drinks Coach and Merry Christmas. Rufus is Brian the Turkey. Everything's going well. Uh, my wife and I have just listened to the carol service on Radio 4. So obviously I'm doing this a day early. And fizz is the thing for this week, right? I mean, Christmas starts now. But here's some fantastic fizzes that people have sent in. It's a bit of a mop-up. Um, hopefully you can still get some of these for New Year's. Um, you know, there might be some deals to be had in January as well. Who knows? Um, but we have some wine sent in by lovely Natasha, uh, PR, um, from home tipple.com. Uh, we've got some wines from the wine society. Yes. The wine society, go and look them up. Um, and also, uh, a few bits and bobs from Lathwaite's and Davies wine and so forth. So we've got uh, quite a lot of fizz to get through. The reason why I'm doing the show now is so I have lots of fizz to drink while you're watching this. Uh, which is tomorrow, which is today. Um, OK, let's start with this. This is an absolute cracker. Um, this is the Society Carver Reserve Brut. If I show this to you. This is 8 95 a bottle. 8 95 to some people might sound actually quite steep for basic carver. Um, it really isn't, not for this. This is made by a small, very, very competent company that make really lovely traditional carver, a company called Samarocco. Uh, this is made from Paralada and... Uh, Macabo. It doesn't have Shirello in it, which is um, the other traditional variety of Penedes for making carver in this, you know, where most of the carver is made, which is near Barcelona, about an hour west of Barcelona in Penedes. Um, San Sidoni de Noia, no less. Um, and uh, this is a really great carver for just party drinking. Um, the Paralada provides lots of kind of lime lemon curd, fruity flavours. It always reminds me of lemon rang pie for some reason. Uh, Macabu produces the spice and the structure. Shirello is often put into sparkling wines um, to give it more intensity, more, more minerality, more tightness. It's like the G-string on a Les Paul guitar. It's like, boom! It's the, the tension that you're looking for in probably more fine, age-worthy sparklings. We'll come on to that in a minute. Um, but here we are. This is the Wine Society Carver. 8.95, I think it's an absolute banger. Yeah, it just smells of lemon drizzle cake. For nine quid, I mean, what do you want? That's the price of what? Where I live, which is London, I can't buy two pints of Guinness for that anymore. Lovely. Mm. Very good, easy start, simple, no nonsense. Things get rapidly much more serious. The next one is also a carver. This is Colette Navathos. 2015. So this is wine with proper age on it. Classic Penedes. You can see the sticker on the front. This is to remind me that it's from hometipple.com. I looked them up online. Um, so we've gone from 8.95 to a carver that's 28.95, I think it is. It's nearly 30 pounds. A lot of money for a carver. Yes, there are sparkling wines in Spain that are that good. They should be. I mean, that's basic entry-level grand champagne price, right? Or any English sparkling. Um, this is from the amazing people at Kipo Navasos. Uh, Jan Pedersen from, um, uh, uh, what's the name of the, the, the Sherry House? I'll, I'll come to him in a minute. But he, him and a group of people got together to make to, to release some incredible single release, single barrel um, sherries that have been forgotten in time or they've bought uh, of extraordinary quality. And uh, they're never cheap, but they are absolutely the pinnacle of what you can buy these days in Spain. Now, this wine doesn't have any Paralada or Macabre in it. It's 100% Shirello, so I'm quite excited to try this. Shirello is an incredible variety, but it's a variety that doesn't really uh, want to be drunk straight away. It's pretty fierce stuff. There we go. Let's have a crack at this. Okay. Well, the colour, very, very pale. As it, well, actually, got some nice... You can see the patina on the, on the, on the screen there. I think that the... The light that I'm using is probably giving it more colour than I can see, but it, that has got some age to it, right? It looks rather sexy. Wow. Well, the fact this guy makes sherry made me wonder whether there was actually some floor character, or some weird, wacky and wonderful kind of sherry with bubbles in. But it's not that at all. It's far more refined. It has really subtle, complex, developed notes of um, sort of digestive biscuit. There's almost a lily floral quality to it. I mean, it's it's a different kettle of fish to this. But again, you know, it's what do you want to do? You want to buy three of those or one of these? That that's the question you're asking yourself. And there's purpose for both. Mm, wow. Very very dry. 
It's possibly Brut Zero, actually. It doesn't taste like there's any autolysis. When you add sugar to a sparkling wine during its development, it comes more toasty. This wine just tastes like wonderfully developed um, sparkling white wine. It's like a, an aged Albarino with bubbles in it. Mm, yeah. It's a hint of earthiness to it, which I rather like. But certainly quite austere. Bubbles are much finer. The mousse is finer. It's probably aged on leaves for a very long time and possibly all six years before it was released. Um, thanks, Natasha. I've always wanted to try that wine. Very, very interesting. So if you want to know what Carver tastes like at £29, try the Colette Navassos. Now, we've got two English wines to try. This is Wyfold Brut, made in Berkshire. It's a Reading postcode anyway. It says on the front there, Barbara Laithwaite. So it's a part of the Laithwaite's family. Um, I know they've got a vineyard outside Laithwaite's mail order company in Thiel, just to the west of, of Reading, but I'm pretty sure that's not the vineyard we're talking about. Uh, but there are some very, very good wines made around there. It's north of Reading, there's Goring, which is an absolute cracker made by my friend Dermot Segru. Um, I'm curious to know what this is going to be like, actually. Did a press tasting really recently with them online. Many, many, many wines. And I kept these for a show um, because they were opening them online. I just thought better just to um, keep it a secret until I tried it. Um, so we've got a nice, slightly larger glass. This glass actually is covered in water spots. It's not very pretty, but I'm just going to let that settle for a second. I'm guessing this is going to be your standard border as a Bordeaux champagne blend of grape varieties. It doesn't smell like it's made from English varieties. Uh, grapes grown by Wyfold Vineyard, uh, Reading Postcode, United Kingdom. Price, I think we're looking at about £33 for this, which is kind of like mid-price for premium English sparkling. Very, very stylish, actually. The nose is lovely. It's focused, has a nice biscuitiness. There's a smell of fresh cooking apple in there. A little bit of English hedgerow, cow parsley. And a measured amount of residual sugar. That wine's got a lovely balance. You've got that typical kind of piercing acidity of English sparkling, because we're so north here. But then there's a, a lovely moderated um, um, sugar. I think if I was a betting man, I'd say it was probably about eight grams. Very definitely champagne quality. Maybe the, the slightly higher residual sugar, I don't know. It's 2016, which was a fantastic sparkling wine vintage in the UK. I think better than the recently feated 2018, um, because that's almost too warm. Made table wines, really. 2016 has the tension, the tightness and freshness that vintages like 2002 had in champagne. And I think it's going to, you know, be borne out as one of the great recent English sparkling wine vintages, but that's an absolutely cracking wine. If I may say, uh, better than expected. Um, that's rather nice. So that's three down. <laughs> cracking through these really quickly. Now, we'll go on to a wine now here, which I've heard much about. I know the likes of Dr. Jamie Good, uh, Wine and Rank, and people who are very, very um, well respected online and in the in industry as a whole, technical experts, but also very good tasters. Um, Jamie Good and a few others have raved about this particular wine. Now, this wine's called Black Chalk. It's made by a chap that has worked for many years at Hattingley Valley, another great sparkling wine from Hampshire, which this indeed is from too. Uh, they've got the chalk soils, which you have in Grand Cru Champagne. It's exactly the same piece of tectonic structure that goes underneath the Paris Basin, underneath the Channel, La Manche, and appears in the Hampshire um, hills. And the chalk gives sparkling wine an intensity and power due to the way that the vines have to grow in chalk, which is kind of unique. Um, Chardonnay grown on chalk around the world usually is very expensive. There's tiny amounts of chalk in the world. Chalk is made from tiny little um, uh, fossils of minuscule shellfish in in parts of of dry land which used to be sea many many years ago and there isn't a lot of it around um i think there's something like um 600 chalk streams in the world where you can go fishing for trout and people pay thousands of pounds for the privilege and about 400 of these directories and, 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 and tributaries are in hampshire and berkshire alone um so we have this treasured soil in Hampshire and Berkshire, which really lends itself to making super premium sparkling wine. And it's the reason why champagne is as special as it is. 
So let's have a crack at this. Um, this is the first time I've tried it. Uh, we're not mucking around now. It's £37. Um, so you're paying, you know, premium uh, Grand Marc champagne prices for this. Um, this is, I think, vintage, classic 2017. 17, I think, was um, somehow not considered as good as other vintage, but it's, it's, it's bollocks. 2017, the ones I've tried, certainly, have had incredible definition uh, and flavour. It's just, I think, there was more rain in the vintage of 2017, which didn't really tell the whole story of the vintage. You know, we had lots of sun as well. So when the grapes were picked, they were certainly dry and in very good quality and good condition. So this is made by... Um, I can't, <laughs> Jacob, is it? My my eyesight's really... <laughs> um, yes, Ledley, that's it. Um, my eyesight's gone really wrong since, since lockdown. I don't know if it's from watching TV or just that I'm now at that age, nearly 52, where my eyesight is finally giving up. Right, let's have a look at this. I've heard such good things about this. I'm, um, there's trepidation that it won't live up to the hype. But thanks again to uh, Natasha Name. Um, this is also available at home tipple for £37. Um, oh. Fruit quality is fabulous. White waxy flowers, kind of magnolia. Uh, comfy apple. Almost a custard apple note to it. It's got so much more richness. I mean, this is a nice drink, fair enough. This wine has wonderful middle sweetness. When you want a wine of great quality, especially sparkling wine, you want it to have a very, what we call, flat flavour profile. You want it to start off rich and to have this kind of linearity to it. What can I say? This is, um, you know, up there. Um, when we say up there, uh, think of it along the lines of Paul Roger. Think along the lines of premium sparkling wines from Champagne and anywhere else. Wine's four years old. In bottle, that would age beautifully for another, I don't know, 10 years? Um, that's a stunner. Um, what can I say? The wrong way around. There we go. This is the Black Chalk Classic Cuvée, £37. I just want to sit there and drink that, as you've probably noticed. I've stopped talking, which is rare. All right, two more wines. I want to say thank you to Cadel Bosco for these beautiful glasses, which they've given me. Um, they've just released the latest cuvee, special prestige cuvee. Calabosco is from Francia Corta, which is largely seen as the Bethlehem of sparkling wine in Italy. They're making champagne quality wines there, certainly since the 60s. Calabosco is the, the kind of leading light. Um, if I was gonna pick two sparkling wines in the whole of Italy, Italy, which I couldn't live without, it would be, in fact, Ferrari from Trent to Dock. Remember, Ferrari now sponsoring F1. They very kindly sent me an F1 limited edition bottle, which I'll be drinking probably on New Year's Eve. But there's also Cadel Bosco. I'll put the little details down. Um, I'm not drinking it today because I know how fantastic it is. I went recently to a tasting of it and uh, it, it's spectacular, but I need to put the details in the down low. You're looking at between 40 and 50 pounds for this wine and it's worth every penny. What we're going to show you instead is the wine that I drank during the carol service with my wife. You can see there's a little drop left. And this is the Society, the Wine Society's Champagne of Choice. This is their reserve cuvee. They do it in half bottles. They do it in Jeroboam's and Magnum's. They do it in different formats. Um, and they've been using these guys for a very long time. I, if I could be bothered, I could probably find out how long. But it's from Alfred Gracia. Alfred Gracia is a properly respected premium, traditional, handmade family champagne house uh, who make absolutely terrific wines. Um, they also have an estate in the Loire called Gracia and Meyer that also make tip-top Cremant de Loire. And if you've been following my channel, you'll know that I think they're probably the most underrated sparkling wines in the France, if not in the whole world. Their very top wine, Cuvée Flamme, I think still costs less than £25, uh, which is a joke for the quality. Uh, just... Just remember the word Gracian, G-R-A-T-I-E-N, Gratian. What's different about this? Well, oh, it's nice for this pop, even though there's a little left. Um, what's special about this? Well, it's become more popular again recently. I think partly because English growers are trying to find ways to re re fill the texture of what other otherwise very compact and very lean wines, because we do have such a, a cool climate compared to the rest of the world. Um, but Alva Gracian, the wines are aged in wood. They do this in Bollinger, but if I was going to pick out two 
wines in the world or two champagnes in the world that age their wines in wood. I'd immediately say Bollinger and Alfa Gracia. There are a few others, um, very expensive ones, Salos and people like that. But look at that glass. What a fantastic sparkling wine glass. Now, you don't need to have a thin, narrow glass to enjoy your sparkling wine. You want it to, to breathe just like a proper wine. I was very much enjoying this earlier and I'm still enjoying it now. Okay, qualitatively, this is up there with all of these wines. Um, this wine is very, very fine. This wine's a little unusual, but fun. Um, but this uh, is the house sparkling wine of the Wine Society. Um, 33 quid. Um, if it was anybody else selling this wine, because it's a non-profit wine club uh, you'd probably be expected to pay about 42 to 45 pounds so it's Verve Clico money and it's it's better than Verve Clico on current form I think oh it's good it's got some sappy willowy notes it's got some some lovely grassy notes to it biscuity baked apple red apples they're based down near the Cote de Blanc in Epernay I don't know if that presumes that they've got quite a lot of Chardonnay in there but it has a wonderful attack despite the oakiness of the wine the not oakiness that's wrong it doesn't taste oaky but the roundness of the wine because it's been aged in inert old wood you have this wonderful instant attack and creaminess to it very very satisfying wine this is the first time I've had the wine society cuvee in about five years and I don't know why I left it that long this is an absolutely fantastic drink um I suppose you know people have a bit of a, a phobia about opening a bottle of wine for guests if it's a brand from a retailer, but they're all brands, aren't they? There isn't a champagne this good in any supermarket that I know of currently, even when you look at the ones that know what they're doing. Even Tesco's do a very good job, Waitrose do a very good job, Marks and Spencer's do a very good job. Actually, they do have some very nice sparkling wines, but this for £33 is... Um, I think unparalleled at that price, and it's absolutely stunning, um, quite delicious. Um, recently, I think Castelnau Reserve, which is aged for extra time, is similar money and, and similarly gorgeous, but these are the secret weapons. If, you, if you're only interested in the flavour of champagne, then buy this, or the premium wines from Castelnau. Mm. Yes, please. Okay, on to the final one. This is, was given to me by Davies Wines. Um, this wine's 35 quid. You can buy it online. They sent this to me about a month ago, two months ago. I've saved it, saved it this long. It's called Reserve 21. Not sure why. Should have looked it up. And it's called Champagne du Menil, which is quite inter interesting. Um, I don't know if that's a, a psychological ploy, because the most famous Grand Cru Blanc de Blanc Chardonnay site in the Côte de Blanc, in the south part of Champagne, uh, producing the some of the most expensive, if not the most expensive champagnes, like Krug Clo, which means Vineyard, Du Menil, M-E-S-N-I-L. Clo Du Menil. How much is it now? I'm not, sorry, I didn't look. 700 quid plus. Well, this one's called Champagne Du Menil, but it's nowhere near Menil. So uh, I just wondered where the name came from. But uh, I'm prepared to give them a go, give them a chance. £35, so similar price to all the others. Quite a paler colour compared to the others. A little bit paler. Packaging. Quite uh, 60s. Quite, I mean, it's the kind of bottle you expect to be knocked against the side of a ship, isn't it? Well, it's got lovely fragrance. It's a little simpler. It doesn't have the depth of complexity of the first one. I'm not entirely sure it's even Chardonnay driven. It tastes like it's quite a lot of Pinot Meunier, or Meunier as it's now called. <laughs> not related to Pinot, that's why. Um, very well made, very well balanced, well priced at £35. It is what it is. It's a very attractive, nice winter cuvee. It's got some ripeness and some warmth to it. Um, but I think having followed these two, it had its work cut out. So, just to recap, we have the brilliant nine quid Wine Society Carver, 
we have the crazy boys, Jan Pedersen and all the other guys, making this very interesting 100% uh, Shirelle, which I think probably would get better even with another three or four years in the rack. Wifold, an absolute cracker from Berkshire, sold at Aithwaite. We've got Black Chalk, which is every bit as good as everyone said it is. Absolute stunner. But for me, today's winner is the Wine Society Champagne. I know that's not very patriotic, especially now we're a third country. Um, but you know what? Sometimes you just have to call it like you see it. So uh, Merry Christmas. I hope you're enjoying the turkey. Um, there's probably a Bond film on later. But here are wines which I think, without exception, are all very competent, decent quality wines, which you could drink possibly in the new year. Uh, I just wanted to say to all my followers, thank you very much for staying with me, for watching the 140 odd shows that I've done so far. Um, please hit subscribe if you haven't done it before so you can become a member. Um, I'd love to get up to about a thousand people um, soon-ish. I think it's kind of hovering around 750 and it's kind of stalled, but that's fair enough. Um, you know, if, maybe there's only 750 people in the world that like me. But there we go. Um, from the WhatsApp household and from Rufus, see you next time. Thank you.